And we are back. So hello, everybody. Basically, what I wanted to do was show you guys a little bit of an update. We're going to be taking a look at the Laura Dream Booth with Koya's Libraries over on Mr. Linacruft's uh, Google Colab collection. There's going to be a link in the description. This is the fast version. The long version is extremely long, and that will be also linked in the description. So you want to learn how to lo how to tr train Loras, Lohas, Locons, and maybe even the new Lycoris. Now that might sound confusing to you, but essentially it's just a drop down. Okay, it's going to be the same collab. All right. Now there's going to be a few things that you're going to need to do before you can actually get started. If you're using Google Colab, then that does mean that you're going to be taking your data set from Google Drive. So we're going to start right there. So here I have a bunch of data sets, which I prepared earlier. We're going to be taking a look at Neo Olympus, which is actually only like, in fact, no, we'll look at one which has got more images. So let's look at Endgate, which has got 32 images. All right. So what we're going to do is just for the sake of keeping things clean, I copy my data set into a new location for LoRa data sets because we are going to be captioning it in the cloud. So the first thing we're going to do is copy the data set in here. And then I'm going to take the path. I'm using Google Drive desktop so I can do this. So here is the here are the images. OK, as you can see, they are uploading. You'll know they're all there because of the little cloud icon. But we're going to go fast. OK, so if I take this path and then I go into my automatic installation and I go to my blip to captioner, I can chuck in both of these paths here. All right. I'm going to set it to 10 and 50 on the settings in batch mode. Now you have to make sure that these images, they are all here now. The cloud icon checks out. So what we're going to do is we're going to interrogate. And as you can see down here, it's now going to start captioning each of those images for us using blip two. And if we look at the cloud, you can see that the text files are starting to come into place. So if I just wait for it to complete all 32 of those, there we go. We're done. So this is live. I'm not cutting and fast forwarding or anything. Now we've done that. We can take this path and I've already got uh, the collab pre-filled so that all we have to do is update it. Now you will have to have one of your own Koya Laura dream booth. And it's already just finished retro wave. It took me one minute and 14 seconds. Okay. Now I am running the premium GPU, but you don't have to, you could run it in the standard mode. It's just going to take a little bit longer and you'll have to have a smaller batch size, but I'm running batch 18. So it's insanely fast, but the point is it's going to be the same for you. So I'm going to change the bits because obviously if you're working in sequence, I'm going to change the bits, which you need to change between each run. So obviously you want the instance tape token to change. We're using end gate. So I'm going to replace that there. We also want to rename this here. So it changes the project name. All right. And then obviously the last thing we need to change is the actual path for where the data is, which is going to be here. Now for me, it's the same location on my Google drive each time. So uh, at this point we can just run it. All right. So I can literally just run this one and I can skip all of this cause I've already captioned my stuff. Um, and then I can run this one and then I can run this one and we can, I do, or I don't have this on, but I run it anyway, just to stop it from like thinking you haven't run it. And then here's the point that most people are going to be interested in. So you, I'm going to be running this on the standard Laura mode, but it'd be very easy for me to just switch it to Lycoris or Locon at this point. So that it's literally a drop down guys. And then you just set, set it up to how you want it to be. Now in a second, I'm going to, I'm trying to get it done quickly for people that know what they're doing just to alert them that this is available. So you click go. And then I don't have, I'm not using low VRAM because I currently have 40 gigabytes of VRAM here. So we're going to click yes. Okay. Batch size 18. All right. And then finally we start the training. 
and that's going to start the training so now i'm going to go to the top of the collab i'm going to explain to you exactly how we're going to do this just by running through it for you okay okay so as you can see this is now running through the training process it's already started training and uh it'll be done in about a minute and a half so it looks like two minutes total to complete this process so i'm just going to go up to the top of this collab and i'm going to quickly run through all the options now obviously if you know what you're doing you can just go ahead and choose whichever network you want to train um, but certainly if you've got the blip 2 extension I hope that shows you how you can very quickly recaption all of your data sets that are on Google Drive and then just point this path point the path and off you go so it doesn't take long there will be a link to the uh, github for all of these in the description okay and uh, I do recommend using the LoRa Dream Booth in combination with LoRa Fine Tuning if you have the time and the uh, sort of, you know, if you have the time because you can get the concepts fine tuned and then you can get the style in the Dream Booth. Same data set, same keyword, and off you go. So it makes some really interesting, uh, unique images. Anyway, first thing you're going to do is you're going to click Go. I would have transformers and mount drive. You're going to give permission to the drive. All right. So, so it's actually going to be able to put the files on your drive. I don't need to open this one up because, uh, like I say, I uh, don't need to see that. I've already got my uh, Google Drive set up so I can actually just look inside of it with Google Drive desktop. Uh, we're going to pick 1.5 for 1.5 or 2.1 for 2.1 from this drop down here. So you're going to if you want to do 2.1 you're going to select nothing and then you're going to select one of these uh i would recommend going off of the base 768 if you're not you know or illuminati diffusion is also a good model to train from okay so then we're going to carry on down the list <clears throat> you don't need to do this section unless you're downloading a custom model from hugging face which i'm not i'm just going to use the base models uh, the VAE, I'm always using Stable Diffusion VAE, but obviously if you want to be training on an anime model, you might want to choose Waifu or anime. If we continue on down this list, and I will say when it asks you to copy, you copy that path there, and uh, you copy this path here for the form later on in this. So it will ask for that. That's how you get it. You copy it from there once you've run this cell. So carrying on down here, if you get confused, just pause and rewind because we're going to go as quickly as we can. So locating the training directory, again, as I've explained previously, open up the folder, go to drive, go to my drive because you've obviously given it permission to access your drive. And then you should have a folder like I have, March Laura, so I can go in here and I can right click any of these paths and I can chuck it in. Now, once you've got it set up, it's just a question of changing the actual folder name. So here I have my data sets and I've copied them to the Laura, March Laura data sets area. So I copy them in here and then I copy the folder name, put the folder name in here, run the cell, keep going. We don't need to unzip because it's not a zip. We don't need to scrape because we're not scraping. We don't need to clean. We don't need to do the transparency because we've already prepared our data set. We don't have scraped images. So we know we don't have any MP4s, WebMs, GIFs. Uh, we do use text captions, but we don't use dot caption. Um, as I showed you already, you can just set the path and you can use blip to bulk to actually or batch just to quickly run through all of the tags. So we're, we're going to skip this too. We're going to skip data annotation. We're going to skip blip captioning because we use blip two, which is better than our, both of these anyway. Don't need to do the custom tag. Um, all of my images are tagged with the name. So cube, cubism cubed, they are all named, uh, cubism cubed with a number. Okay. And then obviously we've got the text files named next to them, but that was all blip. So moving on. If you're using V2, check the box. If you're using 768, check V param parameterization. Uh, the project name, I'm trying to put it, I, I'm using Laura Dream Booth, and I don't want to get them mixed up with other types of Laura. So I've just put underscore Laura Booth at the end of the file name, and then the name of the project. So obviously for end gate, then that is going to use end gate underscore Laura Booth. For the pre-trained model, as I said earlier, you copy this from above. The VAE, copy that from above. Output directory doesn't matter because we've got output to drive checked. That means it's going to go to content drive, my drive, Laura output. Um, if we carry on down, we get to the data set config. 
Now, for me, all I had to do was put in the actual instance token, which again matches the file name and the project name. That's done. With uh, 1.5, we use resolution 512. With 2.1768, we can slide it up to 768. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do such a high batch count. Um, if we carry on down, or batch size, should I say, if we carry on down, if you're using dot caption, you can change it, but Flip uses dot text, so that's what I've got selected. I believe that Flip is going to mirror all of the images so you get them on both sides. Carry on down. We can do various options here. If you don't know what they are, leave them alone. Uh, the sample prompt config, I uncheck this box because I'm not interested in this. I do run it, however. If I keep coming down, obviously we get to the LoRa config. You've got the LoRa networks. That's going to be your standard LoRa network. Lycoris is the second option, and then Locon is the third option. It's better explained here, but really you should probably only be picking the original LoRa network or the Lycoris at this point. Locon is actually deprecated as far as it says, it says it right here, and there's more information on Locon right there. Because at the end of the day, I think they put Locon and LoRa together to make Lycoris. But anyway, carrying on down, I'm using 128 and 128. It will have standard settings, and there is a lot more information linked in this notebook right here. So you can use that. Carrying on down, I haven't had to change anything here. The only thing I did change was linear, as that's something which I like to do. But if you have your own preference, you can set it right there. Uh, carrying on down, obviously, each time we've set our settings, we can just hit play and then move to the next section. But you should probably know that by now. I'm using a big GPU. It's got about 40 gigabytes of RAM. So as a result, uh, I've unchecked the low VRAM. And as you can see, we're running 18 batch size right now. Just to give you a rough idea, if you're on a 16 GB, uh, one of the 16 gigabyte uh, GPUs, you could probably get away with uh, 10 on 512 and probably 8 on 768. All right. Uh, once you've obviously set this up and you're happy with the settings, you can click play on that one. And then we get to the final section where we actually start the training and we just hit start. It's going to run through, give us all of the different information that we want. And then at the very, very bottom, it's going to show us, as you can see here, it took two minutes and 15 seconds to run this uh, Laura. OK, so. Uh, like I said, I'm in the middle of uh, doing a whole bunch of conversions and building some new models off of my old, off my new data sets. So there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff coming out soon. But I just wanted to share this with people because obviously the long version is going to show us messing around uh, me and Doggy Cat from the Civit forum, and uh, you're going to see some new, some new releases coming soon. So thanks for watching, and that is the quick version done.